Hello and welcome back to Speed Dating for Ghosts. I'm Agent of Mischief. Today we are literally going to hell. Let's jump on in, shall we? Oh, hey there, stranger. I don't think you could use some R and R for romance and retribution. My name's Gail. I'm sorry I'm using for using some of the same voices. I'm just I'm blanking on um, different voices I can do, unfortunately. <laughs> you will see this probably if you've watched um, some of my other Let's Plays. So I apologize. There's only so many voices I, I I'm for sure I can still do off the top of my head. <laughs> my name's Gail. I'm a travel agent for the dead. I've got all the best deals. Singles cruises on the river sticks. Cookouts on the shores of hell itself. All inclusives at Daytona Beach. You might be you may be dead. But that doesn't mean you can't still have fun. Nice to meet you, Gail. A nice one, huh? That's unfortunate. I like the bad ones. You actually look a lot like Fran. You're right. I do look a lot like Fran. So much it's almost suspicious. Anywho. Okay, well good thing I'm doing the same voice then. <laughs> I'm organizing a singles event. It's on Mortal Beach, overlooking Bombay Brimstone Bay. This great view of two whole circles. Three when the weather cooperates. It's going to be a party for sure. Sounds great. Then you'll love what I've cooked up. There's some real party animals here. Just wait until you meet Dave. But hey, you didn't pick up my brochure just to hear me blab on. Unless you did. Because then, I totally have a timeshare to sell you. Let's get you to the beach. We'll start off with a nice icebreaker. Something familiar. Some speed dates. living the shores of hell might seem like a strange place to take vacation. It's no Maui, or Cancun, or Bali, but hell has its charms. Sand on mortal beach like the water in the bay is piping hot year-round. The air is sweltering, heavy, like a good sauna. Or an oven. In hell there is no day or no there is no night or day. The crimson light of eternal flames casts a pleasant flickering glow on everything at a comfortable distance. In a way, it's kind of romantic. The bell rings. The first ghost appears. Wait, are they a ghost? Mm -hmm. Salutations, brah. They call me Andy. You party? You look like you party. I party. Rad. Partying's like my main deal. My raison d'etre. I like exist to have a good time. Bring the awesome. What's your favorite kind of party? Something chill. I prefer ragers. But no judgments here. Chill is good. I like my chill time too. Lying back. Going with the flow. It doesn't always gotta be ruckus. What's your favorite means to chill? Good music. Music rules. Heavy stuff especially. Something hella loud. Make your nose bleed. Mm. I guess we're talking chilling out. Probably like something more laid back. Beach jams. Actually, I like loud music. Now we're talking. You know what? I sure don't love this music. We should talk to Gail, maybe. It's really harsh in my buzz. I like it. I need more beats. At least 23% more jams. I'm a party demon. Oh, gotta always be partying. Or else. Or else what? Or else. Oh, wait. Hold on a sec. And he chugs a six pack. Chugs a six pack. All the cans at once. Sorry, I tried to burp in your ear. I didn't even have a good burp. 
Ah, that's better. That was impressive. I'm skilled for sure. You know, that whole 10,000 hours to get good thing? I've partied for a million hours, probably. Plus, there's hella incentive. If I don't party, I die. And you're already dead? Nope. Here's the deep lore dump. Demons are technically alive. And demons can cease to be. If a living person stops breathing. Except I have to remember to breathe. Like, right now, actually. I've gotta dance a bit. And he dances a bit. Cha-cha-cha. There we go. All good in the hood. Hey, wanna hear a fun fact? The beads and chains are just for a show. They lessen my need to party. How? Like zooting party. Like, sort of an RPG or something. Special item effects. Plus three to partying. The bell ringeth. Time to mingle. See you later, crocodile. The party demon. That's new. Another ghost appears. And what do we have here? Another lonely spirit? Tell me, lonely spirit. What is loss? The absence of something? Why, yes, dear. Precisely. You must feel it too, then. That profound emptiness. The loss of your life. I do feel it. And that is good. Now just let go of that feeling. Try to forget you ever existed. Ghosts so desperate for purpose. We lie to ourselves. Tell ourselves we still matter. But a part of us remains. But who is to say we matter anymore? We are not even matter. We are more like echoes. Epilogues of unfinished stories. Soon, there will be nothing more to say. You and I will truly be nothing. I believe it will be glorious. What have you lost? Like you, I lost my life. Unlike you, it happened twice. They call me Agatha, Bane of Brixdale, Connecticut. An irregularity in the blood count, I suppose you could. At one time, call me a vampire. Now, I am a ghost. Vampire ghost? Cool. I am quite chilly, yes. Thank you for noticing. The stake through my heart. I suppose it made me this way. There are very few vampires, let alone vampire ghosts. Who did it? A jilted lover. She didn't know I was a vampire. When she found out, she killed me in my sleep. Now I wander between worlds, a nothing in nowhere, deserving this lonely death, a broken heart on full display. No one deserves to be lonely. Of course I deserve loneliness, just as others feel they deserve happiness. Let me decide what I need, dear. You just worry about you. Perhaps I'm being a tad. Dramatic. You seem quite harmless. I'm complicated. I did sense as much from the moment you appeared across the table. You have a depth about you. You have depth too, I suppose. Though it is more curse than blessing, I'd sacrifice depth for peace. The bell rings. The bell. Time to move on, lonely ghost. It is probably for the best. We will meet again soon enough. Another ghost appears. 
Hi. Hi. Hello. Excuse me. Sorry to bug you. I'm looking for my human. Have you seen her? Does she look like a ram? A ram? You mean Gale? Oh no. Gale's not my human. She's around here somewhere. I'm sure she is. <sighs> my name's Dave. It's super to meet you. Even if I am kind of sad today. What does your human look like? She's small. Kind of looks like a snowflake. She doesn't talk or anything. She just kind of floats there and crackles. Crackles? Crackles! Like static. Thank you for the pat. I'd like pats as a rule, but please ask next time. What kind of dog are you? Hmm. The cute kind? Kidding. When I was alive, I think my human called me Retriever Cross? That your human couldn't talk. She can talk. Not anymore, anyway. My human is a wisp. A piece of a spirit. She's usually right by me, just floating around. Never leaves my side. Why is she a wisp? I think because she's not dead yet. A wisp is what happens when just a part of a person dies. That's what Gail said, anyway. Oh, that's so sad. All I know is, one minute I was alive, eating some chocolate I found. Oh, buddy. The next I died. When I came to, I was a ghost, and the wisp was there too. I guess that means part of my human died with me. It's so sad. I guess. I try not to think too much about how sad it is. Okay, scratch your ears. That would be super swell. You scratched today by the ear. Sorry for the belching. Thank you for scratches. It's pretty hard to do without back legs. The bell rings. Ah, Woof, woof, woof. Sorry. I guess I'm on edge. Still not sure what to think of you. Also, I keep forgetting. When the bell rings, it's time to change places. A few more times. And I'll be trained, hopefully. You see my human. Tell her to come home, okay? Dave almost ran away without- Ran away when you pet him without asking. You're going to need to be more careful if you want to earn his trust. Yeah, I, I probably should have asked. I didn't think. Normally, I would ask. But since he's a dog, I guess I didn't think about it. Second round begins. Sup, spooky Uki. Righteous to see you again. So indifferous, even. I like your bikini. Thanks. I'd like to switch it up. Right now, it's polka dot time. Good for a beach. That's what I thought. It's pretty warm in hell. Even for a demon. That reminds me. Here we go again. Scusi. I need some random air guitar. Hello, East St. Louis. There. All better, Jet Setter. Hey. What's your opinion of platypuses? Platypi? Whatever. Those hairy duck dudes. Look it up. I like them. How can you not? They're the ultimate party animals. I think about shades, sunglasses, like the ones on my dome. Did you put them on an animal? Who looks the most down to party? A platypus. It's inarguable. Okay, fine. Kangaroos are up there. Dogs too. Especially if they're in a sidecar. I love dogs in sidecars. I love dogs at party. Like Dave the dog? Balto over there? Pup's goal and oriented for show. But also scatterbrained as heck. Loyal but flighty. A total Libra. What about Agatha? A vampire goes to wet blanket. Obsessed with the past. Single track mind. Agatha's a Scorpio. Most death. How do you know all this? Internet? Oop! Here I go fading away again. Nature calls. Dave crushes a beer on their head. Andy crushes a beer on their head. There we go. So, where were we? Um, Andy still appears to be fading. Maybe you should keep partying. What? It didn't work? That never happens. Put on more party accessories. I'm trying. Maybe if I put on more party accessories? I left him in the car. 
The bell rings. I gotta go. And he's been partying for more than a thousand years. I'm sure he'll figure this out, don't worry. I mean, don't worry that much. Demons aren't even real. Where are they? I return to drag you further down. I understand why you're down. You cannot truly understand. Not yet, anyway. Time slows when you when you are here. Does time slow around me? I do not understand why. From my perspective, it ticks away just the same. Perhaps your idea of time moves quicker than is typical. Or perhaps it's a product of my curse. I wish I was a vampire. That is not a wish I can grant. At least not anymore. In order to be undead, you cannot first be dead. It only works the other way around. When I first became a vampire, it was difficult to find blood without killing people. No well, blood banks. I am surprised, lonely spirit. You have an intelligence, it seems. That's precisely how I solved my problem. I became a nurse. I was quite good at finding veins. It was easy to take more than was needed. A unit for a test that required a vial. I only took more from those. Healthy enough to give it. You have a favorite blood type? They all taste different. Like red wines. The rarer the type, the blander the taste. The platelet count is also a factor. Then blood can be quite refreshing. But you have to drink more to get your fill. Who turned you? The one who turned me was my husband. My first husband on our anniversary. Eight years to the day. He said this way, I would be pretty forever. I did not ask to be undead. I wanted to grow old. I wanted to die someday. That is the natural way of things. He did not care what was natural. He did not care what I wanted. What happened to him? I foolishly mistook his gesture for a romance and stayed with him for a number of years. But eternity is a long time. Eventually he left me for someone he deemed prettier. I can only assume he turned her as well. You know, lonely spirits, despite some difficulties, you are a good listener. The bell rings. Should you wish to know me better, you need only look where crimson meets black. However, if you are not interested, I will understand. There needn't be any bad blood between us. Goodbye, lonely spirit. Perhaps I will see you again. Vampire ghost has taken an interest in you. That's neat. Oh, hi again. It's me, Dave the dog. Wanna hear a joke? I love to tell jokes. Jokes are pretty great, I think. I'd love to hear a joke. Okay, so, this dog walks into a bar, and get this, he walks up to the bartender, and the dog says, Give me a gin and ginger. Then what happens? The bartender looks up and says, Holy moly, a talking dog. Dave the dog laughs. <laughs> that was my human's favorite joke. You're a good dog, Dave. I try. I really do. I don't chew as much stuff now. I sometimes have trouble with that. The place I was haunting didn't have a pup. I kept finding their stuff chewed up. There's less stuff to chew in hell. You're so nice and good. I'm glad you're in hell with me. If I don't find my human, maybe you can be my new one. Oh no! I shouldn't say that out loud. I forget I say things now. You'll find your human. I sure hope so. I miss Mariam very much. That was my human's name. Mariam took me for walks. 
Twice a day. She let me stop to smell literally everything. And sometimes, when it was extra hot, we'd go swimming in a lake of water. You want more pats? Oh yes, please. You pat Dave. Thanks. That makes me feel appreciated. Appreciated and safe. Where can Marion be? We had favorite places. Where we'd go on our walks. I've had probably one of those. But she's looking for me too. The bell rings. Ah! Woof woof woof. Oh no. I did it again. Sorry. Again. I sure hate that bell. It's the last of the speed dates. Time to pick someone to date. Oh, pick me, pick me! I hope we didn't make Dave fade. Forever. I feel bad for Dave if I did that to them. I wanna go with Agatha. We'll try the other two next, though, I think. Your speed dating finishes, you search for Agatha. You look everywhere. Inside the resort. Not inside the resort. When you finally find Agatha, she's floating on the air off the beach overlooking Brim Brimstone Bay. Looking out over the water, she's a shadow even in the dark. I thought you'd choose another. There is a dog after all. People seem to enjoy dogs. I'm more of a cat person. Cats are wise creatures. They sure are. They are observers, collectors of the dark. They know our secrets. My cat's name was Meowsers. How unfortunate. I suppose you are wondering about the stake in my heart. Perhaps you think if you are in my trust, you can be the one to finally remove it. I'd rather go bowling. I prefer a swim. Thank you for understanding. The stake is my burden. It is a burden I choose to carry. I can take it out whenever I want. Observe. It is not that I need the stake. It is simply a part of me. My current state is because of this stake. I was born with it. I am not whole without it. It's not a token of unfinished... It's not a token of unfinished business? Quite the opposite. It is proof that the business is finished. What does it feel like? It doesn't. Blood-red waters of Brimstone Bay lap up the black sands of the shore. It's difficult to see beneath the water. This is the edge of hell. There could be anything below the surface. Let's go swimming. Agatha leads you by the hand out over the water. She turns to you, then dips beneath the waves. As you move through the water, you feel the water move through you. Beneath the surface, everything is thick and crimson. It's impossible to see more than a couple feet in front of you. You feel what you hope are fish brushing past. Schools of them. At least you hope they're fish. Everything feels slower, too, a little like when you're with Agatha. You can't see her. For all you know, she brushed past like the fish. Until through the mark, you see her. Your face faced the vampire ghost, bathed in blood. When you cannot breathe, lonely ghost, do you ever truly stop swimming? You're first to return to the shores of Brimstone Bay. For a few quiet moments, Agatha emerges from the red water. Something's different. She looks calm, almost content. Like a weight has been lifted off her. My stake. Oh god. I don't know what to do. I need my stake. The noise. That horrible noise. Ah! Frantic Agatha disappears back into Brimstone Bay. The stake in her heart must have fallen out when she was underwater. Dive in to help her look. You decide to dive into the water to help Agatha look for her stake. But wait. Before you leap in, what's that on the shore? 
some hellish miracle, her stake washes up on the beach. You pick it up. The stake has been with her for so long, it only seems to cause her pain. Call out to Agatha. You call out to Agatha. There's no response. You dive into the bay. You try in vain to spot her beneath the crimson waves. You see nothing. And your calls for Agatha are muffled by the water. As thick as blood. You finally emerge once more from the bay. Agatha's stake is in your hand. And it's suddenly so quiet as if time is standing still. You wait there for a while longer. She doesn't come back. Oh. That sucks. I'm just... Oh, I'm not... I just feel empty now, honestly. <sighs> Spirit of Loss. Spirit of Loss. Years Life, 1689 to 1996. Cause of Death, Sacred Heart. Agatha died twice. The first time was at 22. She was bitten by her husband, a man who claimed to love her. I want you to be like this forever, he said. But he grew tired of her and moved on to another. Agatha moved on too, reinventing herself with each subsequent generation. She learned her secret and she was careful to never directly take a life, only drinking blood from blood banks, hospitals, and when desperate butchers. In 1996, Agatha's terrified girlfriend learned who she was and plunged a stake into her heart while she slept. Now Agatha is the ghost of a vampire. That's pretty weird. Let's see about those other dates. Back to hell it is. Return to the shores of hell. Speed dating is all done. Some of the ghosts are still here. Uh, let's go with Dave. I'm slightly afraid that I destroyed Andy. <laughs> you came! I knew you'd come! Are you still liking hell? I'm starting to love it! Guess I'm a real hellhound! That dog's gone to heaven! Well, we do! Well, we can come and go! As we please! There's a doggy door! That's thoughtful! Oh yeah! They think of everything there! Can we go for a walk? Up on the surface? That sounds like fun! Oh boy! It will be absolutely so fun! I want to go take you everywhere! All my favorite places to smell! We got Miriam's Wisp! Oh yeah! Miriam's Wisp! We gotta find her! Good thinking! If we hit up enough spots, we might just find her Wisp! Where could she be? A place we've already been! She's a Wisp! She's drawn to familiar things! The good park? The good pet store? The good couch? One of those, probably! Park. Oh, great. I love the good park. Dave leads you to a park in the deep ravine. The nearby sign says Off Leash Dog Park, but you don't see any dogs. Maybe this is because it's the middle of the night. There are trees here, all dead. The grass is gray. A ways in, there's a rusty playground. A rubber swing set dangles on a single chain. It's kind of spooky. Welcome to the good park! friend Keo would love it. Then I love your friend Keo. Dave runs over to the swing. He starts to tug at the seat with his teeth. It's a t it's a tug toy. He says without losing his grip. Then you hear barking. Just in howls of pain and anguish growing closer. Until they are right up on you. Gurgles, whimpers, the low guttural growls of warning and dread. You turn in horror to see a bunch of super cute ghost pups. There's a ghost corgi that looks like a spooky loaf of dog. A ghost chihuahua, she's making the most of the noise. Yes, that's very chihuahua-like of her, TBH. And a ghost St. Bernard slobbering ectoplasm. Each has a wisp by their side. Hey there, fellow pups! Dave studies each ghost dog's wisp and sniffs each ghost dog's butt. Ghost butt. None of these are Miriam's wisp! Shucks! That was so fun, though. Where'd you now? You mentioned a couch? You're darn right a couch, but not just any couch. My couch. My human thought she owned it, but I peed on it, and she didn't, so... The loss is mine. 
Leaf leads you to a townhouse. A nice place, clearly taken care of. The place is packed with tchotchkes. Library sale books, vintage postcards, souvenirs from trips to Korea and Portugal. Miriam likes to travel! The place is empty. I guess that's where she is now. Traveling! I'm just glad I don't gotta stay with her sister anymore. Tate floats over to an ugly couch, orange and brown, covered in dog hair. He curls up on it. Sometimes I still come here, he says, just to be close to my human. Is this Miriam? It's hard to tell. The wisp isn't doing much. They're just kinda floating in front of you. Maybe they're studying you? Do they even know you're there? Hello, Miriam? The wisp crackles like fire. You're not sure what it's trying to say. Nice to meet you too. The wisp buzzes. Is that a good sign? Are you Miriam's wisp? The wisp blinks once. Is that a yes? Miriam! There you are! Mary's wisp seems excited to see Dave. I'd like you to meet a friend! No, I haven't replaced you! Mary flickers cautiously. See? A friend! Mary flickers and flashes. She'll get used to you. She just needs some time. I'm glad we found her. Me too! Miriam seems regretful. She says she's sorry for running away. Miriam vibrates and flickers a bunch. She sold her old car and chased it out of instinct. Before she knew it, she was lost. So she came here. Dave yawns. We've been up all night. I'm beat. I think it's home time. You're a good dog, Dave. Thanks for saying that. You're a good human. I'm glad we met. Let's go for another walk soon. Bye, Dave. Bye. Marion flickers. I have sometimes thought of the final cause of dogs having such short lives, Sir Walter Scott wrote, and I'm quite satisfied it is in compassion to the human race. For if we suffer so much in losing a dog after an acquaintance of 10 or 12 years, what would it be if they were to live double that time. For Charlie, Mucho Grande, and all the other dogs who made our lives better, thanks for being good pups. Back to hell it is. Turn to the shores of hell, speed dating is all done, so it goes. Speed dating in hell is wrapped up for the evening. Is it even evening? It's hard to tell down here. Either way, you spot Andy. Not an easy feat in their current state. Sal, mutations. I think I've stabilized. Good thing too. For a hot minute, it was touch and go. Ugh. <laughs> uh, squeeze me. Been coughing a bunch. Red outfit, though. Ha. Huh. Thanks. Gotta stay optimistic. In the face of my ailment. This persistent opacity. Has this happened before? Once. In college? I took this class. Post-structuralism? A real snoozer. But somehow I got into it? Studied super hard. It wasn't good for my... State of being? <laughs> oh no. I think that made it worse. I fixed it last time. I... Don't remember. I was pretty drunk. Clearly adding stuff helps. Party guard particularly. It strengthens my vibe. Like, if this ladies plus two party, and the bikinis plus one, maybe adding the right fashion will make me 100%. 100% Andy? <laughs> Is it cold in here? Suddenly I want a shawl. Does anyone have a shawl? Put on your beats. Beats. Good call. It looks so dope. How do I look? 
Pretty dope. Mm -hmm. Heck yeah. Hella dope. I'm not burping into the microphone again. <laughs> Wait, something's happening. Oh no. What did I do? Bruh! I think I'm gonna hurl. Put something on. I don't have anything else. And take something off? I think it'll help. First the lay. Okay, then my killer shades. My other killer shades. Polka dots. Beads. What's left? Just me. Just Andy. Ugh. This is even worse. I feel my bones fading. Somehow. Feels like... The empty in a room. Abject loneliness. Oblivion, bruh. Oblivion. What do I do? What do I wear? Jam steak into Andy's heart. Oh my god, I don't know if that'll do anything. You. Jam Agatha steak into Andy's heart. What are you doing? Ah! Ah! Ah, whoa! That felt... Do you see? What was that? Agatha's steak? I think it worked. I feel... Like time slowed down? Sorta? We're just... Not in the mood to party? My mind isn't going one way now. I want... All kinds of things? I suddenly... Want to... Find a higher purpose? Further my studies? Learn all I can? About post-structuralism? And find a party? A political party? I wonder what I believe. Oh, thank you. I feel so renewed. Refreshed. This is great. I need to go. Have a nice rest of your day. Okay, so wait. Let me get this straight. You know, Andy is a vampiric party demon who wants to get involved in politics. Did you know this game is technically categorized as a dating sim? <laughs> How in the hell can we still call this a dating sim? You may have broken the game with this. Also, I just said, how in the hell? That's funny, because this part takes place in hell. Anyway, bye for now, ghost friends. Make sure to select the pamphlet again for even more incorporeal companionship in. Alright, let's do that one last time and see what it does. And then we may have to reset... Speed dating is over. Now we cleared some room. It's time to dance. The waterfront looks different now. Strings of yellow lights hang between posts in the sand. Tables have been cleared away. In their place, the wooden dance floor is laid out on the beach. As if ghosts needs a place as if ghosts needed a place to plant their feet. The place is packed with ghosts. Many are familiar faces. As music plays, there's nothing left to do but Oh, I can dance with whoever I want, except for Gary. What is a spooky Peter? The ghost party is going strong. Everyone's dancing and having a blast. Well, almost everyone. Hey, do you, by chance, know a ghost with a hat? A weird dude, made of dust, talks like a book? Spooky Peter, that's the one. He's asking for you, over in the corner. He's running some scam. Guests have been complaining. Says he's ruining their night. Let me handle this. Would you? Thanks, baby doll. Spot Spooky Peter across the room. He is sitting at a table with 12 drinks. Aha! My protege returns. Ready for another lesson? Always. Then join me in a game of wits. The rules are simple. Spooky Peter wheezes. Something's still rattling around in there. I have ordered 12 festive and tropical beverages. We take turns drinking them. You may drink one, two, or three. The ghost who finishes the last of the drinks, well, they win, of course. Win what? The next round. He motions to the drinks on the table. Friends always go first. How many will you drink? Three. 
Then I'll take one. Excuse me? That leaves eight. Now how many will you drink? Then I'll have one drink. So there are now four. Now how many would you drink? And I drink two. That's all of them. Spooky Peter wins. My triumph. Like death itself was inevitable. Let's play again. Glutton for punishment? Can't say I blame you. Very well, protege. Let's dance anew. Here calls for a new round. Who drinks first this time? If you insist. Spooky Peter is thinking. I'll drink just one. Your turn. Then I'll take two. That leaves eight. How many will you take? Then I'll drink two, I suppose. At least four. How many will you take? Leaving three for me. That's all of them. Once again, I am victorious. How'd you do that? It's magic. If you don't explain magic, care to play again? No thanks. Then the lesson is at its end. Spooky Peter gasps for air. Ignore it. Ignore it. Let's focus on the lesson. But I worry about you. You needn't worry, protege. I'm simply old, even for a ghost. He sighs. Now then, it is time I once again disappear, like ash on that hellish wind. But fret not. If you wish to see me again, just look in the mirror. I'll come back here. I have nowhere else to be. I can see why the other guests were annoyed. Spooky Peter's game was pretty tricky. So what you will about Peter. The old, go the old ghoul's always full of surprises. Okay, uh, let's check on Agatha then. Agatha stands on the other side of the dance floor. Her hair blowing wildly strands like hands reaching out for something missing. Why? Why does that demon have it? I didn't know what else to do. My burden is not yours to take. I have nothing more to say to you. That kind of hurts, but I understand. I wonder if Kyo's here. It doesn't seem like. Psst. Huh? Oh, over here. Mm -hmm. Hi, I it's me, Kyo. I I'm so relieved you're here. Uh, this may surprise you, but I'm pretty scared of parties, uh, especially ones full of g ghosts and demons in hell. I'll protect you. Thanks. I I'm not gonna be all. I'm a big, strong Keo now. I ain't afraid of no ghosts, because, tr because I totally am. I I'm afraid of every ghost, except you. I, I braved all this, ho hoping you'd show. You're so sweet, Kyo. Aw. But please don't compliment me. I, I don't take it well. Samesies, though. <laughs> anyway, I I've been hiding an event. It, it felt like the best place to see the festivities. Can't say I've ever partied an event. You, you should try it sometime. It it's a blast. Haha. <laughs> Just kidding. It it's terrible. Everything's terrible. Speaking of which, I, I know I'm cutting this short. But, but I should probably go. Q inspects all the other ghosts in the room. I, I could use some fresh air. M maybe see what's in the fridge. I I'm also behind on work. I, I should get to work. You could stay though. A and do what? Hide in a vent some more? You could hide inside of my pocket instead. Haha. <laughs> That's so weird. Anyway, if you need me, I'll be in the vent. We know 
what it's like to, and now we know what it's like to party with Keo. Unfortunately, I have to break out the surfer dude voice again. <laughs> so we'll see. It sort of looks like they're slipping something into the punch. Hey, Square. Long time no scare. <laughs> nice, Drea. Nice. Good to see you, too. Yikes. So polite. What is this, a wedding? Speaking of which, check out this. Quality party trick. You look in the punch bowl. Are those golf tees? You're dang right, they're golf tees. Spikes in the punch. Get it? You probably- you don't get it, probably. Classic you. Never getting things. I totally get it. Pfft. What else? I'm not good- I'm not trying for good grades. Just want to liven things up. Why are you finding hell? <laughs> Believe it or not, it's my first time in hell. Shocking, I know. It's honestly disappointing. I expected something way wilder. This just looks like Florida or something. Cool demons down here, though. You met Andy? Absolutely met Andy. I'm not sure what's going on with Andy. They're acting super weird. Not that I can even pretend. I understand demons. I'm no doctor of demonology. Hey, let's print Gale. What should we do? You want me to come up with something? You mean, like, always? Fine. Watch this. This prank will be the stuff of legends. Dreyer hides beneath the refreshment table. I motion for you to get behind it, too. From this super secret hiding spot, you can see Gale on the other side of the dance floor. She's talking on her phone. So then I says to the angel, Listen, I don't have all day. Do you want to make out or what? Hold on, I'm getting another call. This is Gale. Hello? You've reached Gale. Are you interested in a travel package? Haha. <laughs> package. Oh, that was- <laughs> Package. Excuse me? Click. What the hell? The stuff of legends. <laughs> the is so weird, I love them. Okay, let's check on Leon and Vera. We're gonna try to do all of these and then we will um, read the gravestones and stuff. Or, well, did we read the one for the dog? No, we, did. we did not. This party's packed with ghosts and demons. Once you don't even recognize. Leon's gotta be somewhere around here. Wait. There he is. But who's that with him? So, what have you found out? That girl ladies. Watching things pretty good. Hey guys. What the hell? Hey! It's you! Our partner in crime! That's right. It's me, Carl. I'm dead now. I'm a freaking ghost. That's great, Carl. How come ghosts are all? Ooh. Are you all so sad? You can float through walls. It's the freaking best. Shh. Reunions can wait. We gotta get busy. A lot of rich demons down here. With demons, there's treasure. Who's the out, boss? We love demon treasure. Shh. Sorry. Well, that was rude. Leon didn't even say hi. Not that I expect anything else from that crook. Also, Carl died? What's up with that? Let's check on Vera. Vera's sitting on a table taking it all in. I'm almost already doing the voice. Hey there, hon. 
Good to see your face again. I'm almost doing this with computer voice. <clears throat> I sensed you'd be coming. It's my gift now. Sensed? That's right. Sensed. For all that seance business, I decided to try something new. I became a medium. Here's my card. If you're a ghost psychic, as in I am a ghost who is psychic, contact info, say my name three or four times. So professional. Thanks, son. It does the job. You want a reading? For you, it's on the house. I love a reading. If you're suddenly concentrating very hard. I see that you are a good ghost. And I'm glad to know you. Vera smiles. It always weirds me out when she smiles. Honestly, readings are a racket. The real fun's in medium work. I'm able to hear the living. So they did come to me. They're looking for someone. Can you connect me with someone? Sure can. Maybe some other time. It's too noisy for a seance in here. Just think of someone still alive. You'd like to reconnect with. And give me a call. You have my card. Until then. It's good seeing you, hon. You stay out of trouble. Lord knows we ghosts. Get enough of that. Hattie is here. And she's with someone. Oh, Milton. Hello again, dearie. It's good, it's so good to see you. I'd like you to meet Milton. Hello. Hello there. How are you doing? Nice to meet you, Milton. Good looking and polite. Milly. Hey, just saying. I'll have to forgive my Milton. He's definitely more plant than Rose, if you know what I mean. I do. You strike me as a Dorothy. Oh, Dorothy is... B. Arthur, isn't she? I take that as a compliment, thank you. Hope that's a compliment. Of course it is. Dorothy's all wisdom and strength. And sass. Don't forget the sass. How do you like the afterlife, Milton? It's a gas. Old time and no pressure. I don't have to worry about a thing now. Would you still help out at the home? Of course. It's my duty. My purpose in all this. And I'll be right there with her. It's so romantic. Turns out romance is dead. Hattie laughs. Okay, I'm getting the Vera voice back more for him, I guess. It's just one of those days. Good one, Millie. For that's enough chit chat. What do you say we cut a rug? I'd love to. Wonderful. Back in my younger days, I wasn't much of a dancer. But I try to be interesting. Without me feet. You'll be fine. Just do like we did at our wedding. And follow my lead. Hattie turns to you. Now watch this. Hattie's spinning around the dance floor. She's got more energy than Riley out there. Milton's doing his darndest to keep up. Come on, Millie. No time like the present. How am I out of breath when I don't have to breathe? Just slide back and forth. Not you two. Don't worry. We'll all get there. Hattie laughs. She's lighter than air. Okay, let's check on Steph. How's she doing? Steph is in the middle of the dance floor. Ghosts and demons are dancing in circles around her. Steph shakes, eyes rolled back, almost in a trance. It looks more like a ritual than a dance party. But then this is hell, and these are dead people we're talking about here. Hey! Hello! 
my gosh. Hi. The music is louder on the dance floor. And Steph is soft spoken. She has to yell to be heard. I'm so happy you're here. I could say the same about you. Beg your pardon? Sorry. It's hard to hear in here. I could say the same about you. I love them too. My absolute favorite band. Oh, she thought I said you too, didn't she? Steph absolutely didn't hear you. Hell? Sorry, just a sec. Sorry, okay. How have, you, so how have you been? Pretty good. I'm so sorry to hear that. Things with me have been great. We've been traveling a ton. Deciding what kind of ghost I want to be. I tried haunting a restaurant. Nobody noticed. And a video store. But this was deader than me. So now I'm trying out a concert hall. And it's perfect. I've never been happier. Tell me about the video store. Italian mostly. Lots of pasta and cheese. Sorry, one more sec. This is a good part. Awesome. So yeah. Where were we? Well yes, the restaurant. I have no idea what's going on. Haha. <laughs> I absolutely used tomato sauce. But I should probably let you go. I'm supposed to be concentrating. Something about a... Lydian liturgy? In the deepest hills? Whatever. All I know is, it's great to see you. And this is super fun. So stuff's fine. These three. Let's check on Andy. You spot Andy. The party demon seems less interested in partying than gnawing on other guests. The ghosts and other demons here are keeping their distance. Hey, bruh! Got any blood or guts or whatever? I'm so hungry! <laughs> Are you okay? That depends on your definition. But the word okay. By okay you mean. Wanting raw meat? And also to sleep forever? But I've never been better? Well no. I gotta spew. Andy makes a beeline for the lake off the beach and pukes into the waters of hell itself. A lot. But hey, look at the bright side. They haven't disappeared forever. I guess when you turn a demon into a vampire, you take the good with the bad. Well, I kind of also feel bad that I took that from Agatha. I feel like I fucked up, and she hates me forever now. As the band starts a new set, you look around the dance floor. There are plenty of familiar faces, but you don't see Riley. This next song is very dear to my heart. He's not sitting anywhere off to the side, either. Maybe she's just not here. It reminds me. Wait a minute. A very special ghost. I know that voice. Someone I met at an event much like this. You look to the stage. Riley's at the mic. He's singing a song. I used to be a player. The muscles did the talking. But since I met you, ghost, my defensive line stopped blocking. Speak of the devil. This goes out to you. Here we go. I won't play the field no more. I'm not gonna sing. I've thrown my last Hail Mary. And though we may be dead, with you it ain't so scary. And now the chorus. You sacked my heart. You sacked my heart. You knocked it down off its heart feet. <laughs> you sacked my heart. You sacked my heart. You kicked it through for points three. You sacked my heart. Sexy ghost. You sacked my heart. The crowd of ghosts and demons cheers as Riley soaks up the praise. 
He's looking right at mm -hmm. you. Thank you, thank you. We're gonna take a quick five. He practically leaps off the stage to see you. My least favorite boy, hello. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just don't like jocks. I'm so happy you're here. What did you think of the song? It's romantic. I was hoping you'd think so. I just can't stop thinking about you. Safe to say, I think you're pretty cool. You wanna smooch? More than anything. You smooch a bunch. Like three bunches of smooches. You really brought your aid game today. That's five, Riles. You ready to jam some more? That's my cue. Thanks for coming to see me. You, um, sacked my heart. Let's check on Dave. Where are your pop spots you've across the dance floor? He wags his tail when he sees you. Hey, hi! It's me again! Dave the dog! The wisp of Miriam the human appears by his side. She fizzes like Pop. Miriam says hi too! Nice to see you both again. You are a good human. See, Miriam? I told you! Miriam's voice crackles pleasantly. You must be happy to be reunited. Absolutely! Definitely! Tail waggingly. Mary's with sparkles. We have bond we have a bond for sure. Then she was far away. That bond was sure stretched, but it'll never break. So now you wait. Wait? Oh, you mean waiting for Miriam to die? Mary's with fizzes a bit. Fizzles a bit. Honestly, I just want Miriam to live her life. The longer the better. I hope she lives to be twelve. Maybe even thirteen. That's ninety one in people years. What do you do in the meantime? We'll do so much! Sniff out the best spots, talk to all the ghosts. I have so much to learn. Not that I can talk, it's a whole new chapter. They say all dogs go to heaven. Heaven for me can be anywhere. As long as I have pals. Can I give you one last pat? I would love one last pat. You pat Dave on his cute face. He wags his tail lots and lots. Mary's wisp flies over to the water's edge. She makes loops in the air as she goes. She wants me to chase her. I gotta go chase her. Thanks again for everything. I'll never forget you. My other human. Let's go for another walk sometime. Dave barks and wags his tail as he tries to catch Miriam's wisp. She dances above the red sand, barely out of reach. As Dave barks and growls playfully, his tail won't stop wagging. What a good boy. Even the nice ones, and 
the sad ones and spooky customers? Especially the nice ones. I guess in the end, we're all in this together. Friend walks out on the dance floor. She smiles. Thank you so much for signing up. For this silly little speed dating. For taking the time to know me. And all these other misfit spirits. I can't imagine what our deaths would be like without you here. To liven things up. Hee <laughs> hee. Spirit of Revly, years of life, not applicable. Cause of death, not applicable. Lone demon at a party for ghosts. Andy ceaselessly sinks fun, often to a fault. Parting both defines and sustains Andy. They literally feed off the joy of others. It's not actually that unusual. Most demons have a singular purpose. Without that purpose, they weaken or even fade away. Andy struggles with this, feeling pigeonholed by a predetermined and narrow sense of self. But the alternative is super scary. What happens if Andy tries to be more than they are? What happens if Andy grows, changes, or outright abandons what makes Andy, Andy? These thoughts haunted Andy before they met you, and now they know. Spirit of Loyalty, Years Alive, 1999-2011. to 2011. Cause of death, chocolate. By all accounts, Dave was a good boy. He sat when asked to sit, fetched when required, and shook a mean paw. But he also loved food, like a lot. He liked the taste of all sorts of things, clothing, the corners of the walls, porcupines, and or skunks. They've tried to eat it all and usually succeeded, but he met the mat he met his match today, his human Mario left an entire box an entire box of ultra dark baker's chocolate on the counter. When Mariam found Dave on the kitchen floor, a piece of her died too. A piece follows Dave around, loyal like a dog, and hopes that when Mariam dies, she will find her best friend and be reunited in the afterlife. Gale, Spirit of Opportunity. Years alive, 1958 to 1984. Car crash. How much isn't known about Gail prior to her death? She keeps the details of her life buried pretty deep. We do know that she died in a car crash in 1984. She was a pedestrian at the time and was run down a secluded country road. By all accounts, it was the fog's fault. Afterwards, Gail settled well into death, seeking out adventure and trading in underworld that could travel. Ruth's are always trying to figure things out. The afterlife is full of people who are finally free but refuse to take a break. I think makes Gale happier than successfully distracting a ghost for even an hour by convincing them they might still be able to live a little. Anything else to do in hell? Return to the beach party. I guess not. Party's nearing its end. The beach is quiet, empty. The fires of hell burn across the bay. Red light flickering off the ink black water. His wife slapped softly off the sand and rocks. You sit for a while. A pair of wisps float by, stuck in each other's orbit. Two wisps aren't heading any. The two wisps aren't heading anywhere in particular. They seem happy. You're still here. I could. I came back one last time. Don't blame you. I threw quite the party. But things are winding down now. And like the saying goes, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Anyway, thanks for taking me up on my offer. You're welcome in hell any time. Toodles, baby doll. I guess that's the end of the game. Um, we're going to um, do one last attempt if we can of uh, romancing Gary. Well, I'm not gonna do that just now. I'm gonna take a break. Uh, edit this video. Do a little something else first. And and then we'll record the finale. Um, thank you guys so much for showing up and um, checking out this series. If you enjoyed the game, if you enjoyed the series, if you just enjoyed my walkthrough, my commentary, what have you, it'd be really slow if you could hit those like and subscribe buttons. 
leave a comment if you're feeling generous. And I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.